Hello and welcome to my Once Upon a Time in Gelenor quest guide. This quest has no skill, quest or other requirements and you need no items at the beginning or throughout the quest in order to complete it. This quest is broken down into four sub-quests and I'm going to detail each one of those as their separate part. If you want to skip to a particular sub-quest you can find the links for the part of the video down below in the description. At the end of this guide, I'll also solve the very quick and easy clue scroll that you can get at the end, just to help you all out with that. If you're a space bar warrior, it should take you around about 40 minutes to complete all of these mini quests. Uh, if you're a space bar warrior, it should take you about 40 minutes to complete this quest, including all of the subquests. And if you like to understand what's going on in quests, it should take you a little bit over an hour to complete. The rewards for this quest are 4 quest points, 4 medium experience lamps, Rolomia's party hat cosmetic override, Closure's ghost book cosmetic override, Rolomia's wand cosmetic override and the shadow rip home teleport override, as well as a bonus short clue scroll after completing the quest. One note to make is that you can't bank the experience lamps that you get as the reward. Now, most people won't have an issue with this. However, if you're wanting to go from the first subquest to the final subquest, you'll find that in the third subquest, you have to have an empty inventory, worn inventory, and no familiar on you. And that means you can't have the lamps on your character. So you're gonna have to use those up. To start this quest, teleport to the Varrock Lodestone and then run northeast into the Blue Moon Inn in Varrock. Once you're in the Blue Moon Inn, you're going to want to speak to Rolomia, who can be found by the fireplace, and go through her dialogue and click Accept Quest. Now, once you've accepted this first quest, there is going to be an additional dialogue afterwards, and then you're going to want to click on her again in order to start the first subquest, which is Foreshadowing. Once you've done this, click on the table to the left to pick up a party hat and some punch. It doesn't matter whether you choose alcoholic or non-alcoholic for the drink, so pick whichever you'd like. Wear the party hat and drink the punch. Once you've done this, you're going to see a quick flash of you turning into Rolomia and then back into yourself again. And then you're going to want to speak to Rolomia again. Now here you're going to get some dialogue options and I'm going to detail exactly which you need to be choosing. So what's going to happen is you're going to recount some of the adventures that you've been on or should have been on. And the first option is going to be that Count Draenor was killed using a wooden stake. Once you've done that, you want to choose that it wasn't called Blacklight, which is for the Delrith story. And finally, for the Elvag story, you want to choose it had one head, not three. Again, these sometimes come up in different orders for other people. However, if every time I've done it, it's come up in wooden stake, black light, and one head, not three. Once this has happened and you've gone through the dialogue, Rolomia will hit you and you'll be teleported to death's office. This isn't any way of you dying. Like this isn't something you need to be worried about as a hardcore. This is just part of the quest. Once you've completed the dialogue with death, you can choose to unequip the party hat in order to skip some additional dialogue if you want or keep it on to get some more dialogue and then go into the door to the right of death for Closure's study. Once you've entered Closure's study, run north through these barriers and you want to speak to Closure. Closure is going to tell you that there are some souls that are waiting in line and that you need to wait your turn. Once this dialogue is over, you will want to run back south into the lobby area past the barriers and speak with Delrith. Delrith is going to provide some dialogue options for you and is going to require you to recite some words that he says. The order for these words are going to be Carlum, Aber, Camarinthium, Perchai and Gabindo, which is the third, first, second, fifth and fourth options for the dialogue. After this, Delrith will be sucked into a vortex and will disappear. Next up, you're going to want to speak to Elvarg, who can be found next to where Delrith was. You're going to want to go through Elvarg's dialogue, and here she is going to say that she wants you to collect her treasure from the Draenor Bank and will give you a will and testament to take there. Once you've received that in your inventory, go over to the right and speak with Count Draenor. Count Draenor is going to ask that you go to Draenor Manor and turn off his range. And once this dialogue is done, you can either teleport yourself to the Draenor Lodestone or use an Amulet of Glory to teleport to Draenor. Once you're in Draenor, run north and all the way through this gate and this forest area into Draenor Manor. 
Now, if this is the first time you've been in Draenor Manor, you will get a prompt when clicking on the front door to ask if you want to enter this door. You're going to want to just simply choose yes. Once you've gone through, go through the door to the left there and then through the door to the north and then you'll be able to see there's two rooms on the left. You want to go in the one which is the most northwestern, which has got a range in it. Also, apologies for my lag there. Something really weird happened on my computer. Once you enter that room, click on that range that I'm stood in front of and you will turn it off. Then you're going to want to return to Draenor via the Lodestone or your Amulet of Glory, run south and enter the bank. Again, apologies for the lag here, it was really unfortunate. There was no lag while I was actually playing, but for some reason it's shown up as a really big lag on the recording. Once you enter the bank, you're gonna to want to use the last will and testament on any of the bankers in Draenor Bank, go through their dialogue, and you will receive Elvag's treasure hoard. Now there is an option on this treasure hoard to peek in it. Now this doesn't really do anything for you, but it does give an additional dialogue option when you return to Elvag, which is gonna be what you want to do next. But it doesn't impact the quest in any way, so that's really up to you. Once you've got that treasure hoard and have turned off the range, run back north past the Draenor Lodestone and click on Death's Hourglass to teleport back to Death's office. Once you're in Death's office, run up the steps here and then go through the door to the right or to the east, which is for Closure Study. Now that you're in Closure Study, speak to Elvag on the left with the chest in your inventory and go through Elvag's dialogue and she will teleport away. Then go over to the right and do the same with Count Draenor. This is going to get rid of all the NPCs that were waiting in line ahead of you, meaning you can now go and speak to Closure as you are the next soul in line. Go north through the barriers and speak to Closure. You're going to receive a contract off of Closure, which is going to be used to trick Rolomia into signing it so that you can become yourself again and Rolomia becomes Rolomia again, as Rolomia has taken over your identity in this quest. After this brief animation, you'll get this contract, and what you're going to want to do next is teleport back to Varrock and re enter the Blue Moon Inn, which is located just northeast of the Lodestone. One note to make here is that if you did unequip the party hat earlier to skip some of the dialogue, you will now need to re-equip it in order to continue the quest. So if you have taken it off, just click on it, and if you've lost one, you can reclaim one from the table next to you. Once you've equipped it and spoken to Rolomia, you're going to get some prompts. The first one will be the third option, hello, followed by your runescape name. And then you're going to choose the fourth option saying that you are Rolomia's biggest fan. And then you're going to want to choose the third option in order to get an autograph. You'll then hand her the contract, she'll sign it, and you'll be reversed back to your own identity. And Rolomia will get her own identity back as well. As soon as Rolomia has teleported away and you finish off the dialogue, you can now teleport back to Draenor to get back to Death's office to speak with Closure. Once again in Death's office, just go up the steps here and then go through to Closure's study on the right. Run north through the barriers again and speak to Closure to complete this quest. That's going to be everything for this first part of the quest. For this foreshadowing subquest, you're going to receive yourself an experience lamp and Lomia's party hat cosmetic override. To start the second subquest, you want to speak to Closure in Closure Study, and when you get the flashback quest prompt, you want to click on Accept Quest. Once you've done this, you're going to go through a very lengthy cutscene with Closure and Rolomia in Closure's office. For the sake of this video, I'm going to skip through this. Once the cutscene is over, you're going to want to teleport to the Varrock Lodestone and enter the Blue Moon Inn pub that we started the first quest in. If you have skipped to this part and have done the first part of the quest a while ago, this pub is located just northeast of the Varrock Lodestone. When you enter the pub, rather than speaking to Rolomia as you have done before, you'll want to speak to the bartender behind the bar. This bartender is then going to give you a handwritten note. Once this note is in your inventory, click on it to read it to get the clue as to where Rolomia is. 
The answer to the clue is going to be that Rolomia is in the Jolly Boar Inn. The Jolly Boar Inn can be found northeast of Varrock. You can get there by teleporting to the Infernal Dig Site, or you can follow the pathway that I am taking now through Varrock to the northeast, up through the northern exit gate, and then east past the Dig Site area into the pub. Once you enter this pub, you'll find Rolomia at the back of it next to the bar. Once you're here, speak with Rolomia and go through her dialogues until eventually she will hand you a stack of biographies. Once you've gotten these biographies, she will teleport away and you'll want to return to closure via Death's office. You can get there using the War's Retreat teleport or you can teleport to the Draenor Lodestone, click on Death's Hourglass and get to Death through there. Once you're in Closure study, you'll want to run north through these barriers and then speak with Closure. Now apologies for a little bit of lag here again. Once you have finished speaking with Closure, run south and in the southeastern corner you'll find Merlin. Speak with Merlin and go through his dialogue and eventually you will be teleported to Merlin's flashback. Now that you're in Merlin's flashback, you're gonna see a few things going on here. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is finish off this dialogue with closure first. And you'll notice there is a manipulator in your backpack. Right click on it and press play, and you will watch a scene play out from the Merlin's crystal quest. Of course, this isn't how it actually went. And your job here is to turn everything around so that this quest goes how it actually went when you did it. So once this is done, you're going to want to go through the dialogue with Closure, and then on the manipulator, right click it and press restart. You want to click on the big crystal in the center until its name changes to giant crystal, and the shield on the left wants to turn it into a wall shield. Once you've done that, click on your character in the center, interact with them, and choose their option for destroying the crystal to be the Excalibur. Once this has all been changed, right click on the manipulator and press play. You'll see that Merlin was actually freed from the crystal this time around. And once you finish watching this little cutscene area, you will then be teleported back to Closure's office. Now that you're back, speak again with Merlin and go through his dialogue. And at the end of his dialogue, he will teleport away. Now that Merlin has teleported away and you've finished with his flashback, go to the west and speak with Ozan to start his flashback. Similarly to the last flashback that you've done, what you'll want to do is go through the dialogue, right click on the manipulator and press play to watch a cutscene play out from this quest, which didn't actually happen. Once Ozan's died and that little cutscene has ended, Closure will speak to you. After he's finished speaking with you, right click on the manipulator and press restart. Interact with Ozan and choose for him to jump second, which is the second option. Click on your character and choose jump first, which is the first option. And then click on this teleport, which is in the bottom left of the tower. You're gonna then want to click on the cart once to change it from being an empty cart to a cart that is full of hay. Once this is done, right click on the manipulator and press play to watch the actual cutscene play out. Now that this cutscene has played out, you'll be teleported back into Closure's study. Speak with Ozan again and go through his dialogue for him to then teleport away. Finally, you're going to want to go north and speak with Ava and go through her dialogue to be teleported to her flashback. Now, as before, you're going to want to right click and press play on the manipulator and watch a really weird cutscene play out with Calcula, which is by far my favorite NPC in this game. Now once this has played out, you'll get a dialogue from Closure, right click the manipulator and press restart. 
Behind you will be a lever. Click on it twice so that its name changes from lever B to just lever. And then you're going to want to click on your character and choose the second option. Finally go to the spooky clock to the west and click on it twice to turn it into a wardrobe. Once you've done this, right click on the manipulator and press play. Now that this cutscene is done, just like with the other NPCs that you've saved, click on Ava and go through her dialogue and she will teleport away. That's pretty much it for this quest, you're going to want to then just run through these tedious barriers north to speak to Closure, go through his dialogue and you will complete this subquest. To start the next subquest, you'll want to speak with Closure in his study. You'll get this prompt for Fortunes, press Accept Quest. One thing to note is that you will need to use the experience lamps that you've gained in order to progress through this quest, as one part of this quest is going to require you to have a completely empty inventory. Go through this dialogue with Closure, and once you have finished this lengthy dialogue with him, you'll want to run south to the NPCs waiting in the lobby area. Run south and this time you're going to want to speak to all three of the NPCs. The first one is Zanik, which is located just to the east of the barrier. The next one is Sir Tiffy just opposite Zanik. And then finally is Ariane who is located just south of Sir Tiffy. Once you've spoken with all of these characters, run north back to Closure and speak with him. You're going to get some dialogue options come up when Death appears to speak with you two, and the options that you're going to want to click are as follows. First of all, you're going to want to choose the first option, then you're going to want to choose the second option, and then you're going to want to choose the third option, Death, in order to progress through the quest. Once this dialogue is finished, you're going to want to teleport to the Draenor Lodestone and then run into the wheat field located southeast of the Lodestone. Once you arrive at the Lodestone, run south and then east into this big wheat field you can find. In this wheat field, there are going to be three different spooky scarecrows. You're going to want to click on those to pick them up, and when you pick them up, they will be placed into your inventory. The first one can be found by the entrance, the second one can be found in the most northeastern corner of the field, and the third one can be found by the small structure to the south of the field. Once you've collected all three of these scarecrows, you're going to want to run northwest, just past the lodestone where you can see some markers. These markers are going to be like wooden signposts and can be a little bit hard to see at first because they blend in well, but you should be able to find them. The first one is located just north of this big rock structure. Click on them with the scarecrows in your inventory and at each one of these you will place a scarecrow. They can be found in a line if you look to the west and you just want to click on all three of these posts. Once you've done this, you're going to want to run east into Death's office and go back and speak with Closure. At the end of the dialogue with Closure, you will receive a confiscated sword in your inventory. This is going to be placed on a marker next to the third scarecrow that you placed, so you're going to want to teleport to the train or lodestone and then go northwest as you did before to find this marker. Once you get to the markers, the marker that you're looking for is located just a couple of squares to the west of the final scarecrow that you placed. Once you click on that post, you'll place the sword there. Once you've placed the sword, you'll want to run back to Death's office and speak with Closure again. Once you've spoken with Closure again, you're going to want to teleport to the Varrock Lodestone and then run right the way east into Varrock to the Dancing Donkey Inn. You can follow the path that I take here from Varrock Lodestone to get there very easily. You'll want to go through this gate that's got a guard next to it and then into the first building to the south and Rolomia can be found in the bottom left corner of it. You're going to want to speak with Rolomia and she will push you back. Then go and speak with her again to continue the dialogue. 
There will be a dialogue option come up, it doesn't matter which one of those you choose, so just pick any one of them and Rolomia will teleport away. Now that Rolomia is teleported away, you're going to need your inventory and your worn inventory to be completely empty and make sure you have no pets or familiars summoned, as if you do, you won't be able to continue with the quest. Return to closure via Death's office and when prompted, choose yes. There is going to be a fight sequence here where you are close to death, you will not die here and it is completely safe. Once you've been teleported outside of Death's hourglass, you'll want to go through the dialogue between Death and Rolomia. The point of this is you're going to be taking Rolomia through a little sequence and you're going to want to follow where she goes. Essentially what she's going to do is just go to where you placed those scarecrows previously. Now there's going to be a few times where you want to speak with her. The first one is when she says, well, now what? And approaches the scarecrow. You'll want to speak with her and eventually after the dialogue, she will attack the scarecrow. She'll begin walking to the west again and you'll want to speak with her again when she approaches the scarecrow and says, can't wait for that reward though. Speak with her, go through the dialogue and she'll destroy the second scarecrow and will continue over to the third scarecrow. Follow her to the third scarecrow and when she says, I hope you didn't seal these enemies, you'll want to speak with her again and she will destroy the third scarecrow. She'll then approach the sword that you placed next to the final scarecrow and say, what's this? When that happens, you'll want to speak with her again and there will be a dialogue. Now, after this dialogue is going to be a fight sequence. You don't have to do anything in this aside from equip Rolomia's wand and just click on her. It doesn't matter. You won't win this fight. The point of it is that she beats you. You'll come very close to death, but you will not die. Death will teleport you away safely just before you die. Once you've been teleported away, continue through the dialogue between yourself, Closure, Death and Rolomia. At the end of this, there will be a fade to black scene and you will arrive back in Closure's office. Finally, speak with Closure in Closure's study in order to complete this third subquest. So to begin the final mini quest, you're going to want to speak with closure in his office and when you get the finale prompt you're going to want to click accept quest now i'm doing this on an alter account because my recording from my original account actually kind of broke at this part so if you're wondering why it looks all a little bit different with the interface and stuff that's why so you're going to want to go through this entire dialogue here and once you've completed this dialogue you're going to want to then run south to the three npcs that you can find just past the barriers. The first one you'll want to speak to is Meg. Once you speak with Meg, you'll be asked if you want to enter Meg's memory or flashback. You're going to want to click yes, which is the first dialogue option. You'll then be teleported into this memory. Once you enter the memory, right click on Rolomia in the purple, choose assign free agent and choose the fourth dialogue option delay Sutcliffe's return. Once you've done this, click on the front door, which has got the portcullis gates, and assign Meg to it, which is the first dialogue option. Then click on the Black Knight Patrol and assign Eva Kashin, and click on the stepladder and assign Captain Higgs. Once you've done this, right-click on Rolomia and choose to play the memory. This is going to be a long cutscene, and once you've completed this cutscene, you will have finished this part of the quest. Once you return to Closure's office, speak with Meg and she will teleport away. Once that happens, go to the northwest and speak to Cammy there. When prompted, choose the first dialogue option, yes, to enter Cammy's memory. Once you enter Cammy's memory, you're going to want to right click on Rolomia and choose assign free agent. Then choose the fourth dialogue option, fend off the tiger's claw. Once you've done this, click on the intricate lock in the center and assign Hanovi. Once you've done this, there'll be a big door to the north, click on it, and with that you want to assign Kami, which is the first dialogue option. Finally, the strange symbols to the east, you're going to want to assign to Jobo. Once you've done all of this, right click on Rolomia and press play memory to watch another cutscene. Once you return to Closure's office, speak with Kami, and after the dialogue, Kami will teleport away. Once this happens, speak to Philippe Carnillion, who can be found at the eastern wall. When prompted, choose the first dialogue option yes to enter Philippe's memory. Once you're in Philippe's memory, you want to right click on Rolomia and choose assign free agent. Then choose the fourth dialogue option, which is to taunt the bright inquisitor. 
Once you've done this, rotate your camera so that you're looking south, click on the defender position and assign Commander Zilyana. I accidentally assigned Philippe there, don't do that, assign Zilyana. Click on the Bright Inquisitor and assign Nymora, and then click on the gate controls, which are just between the two of them, and choose to assign Philippe. I'm going to fix my mistake that I made here by assigning Philippe to the controls, and then clicking on the defender position again and assigning Commander Zilyana. Once you've done this, right click on Relomia and choose Play Memory. After this cutscene, you'll return to close your study, speak with Philippe, and he will teleport away. Once this happens, you'll want to run north to where Closure and Relomia are standing and speak to Closure. There's going to be two separate dialogues here, so you'll want to make sure that you click on all of them. Go through the first dialogue between Rolomia and Closure, and once Rolomia teleports away, click on Closure again to speak with him to finish that part of the quest. Once you've done that, continue the dialogue in order to complete the entire quest as a whole. You'll get this prompt once you've done that. Now that you've done that, as a bonus, speak with Closure again until he teleports away. This is going to allow you into his private quarters behind the door to the northwest. You want to click on this door once he's teleported away and choose yes to enter his personal stace and then invade his drawers. You will then receive a clue scroll. Click on the clue scroll to get the clue and then you'll want to teleport to Draenor Village and go to the central area where Rolomia can be found. Once here, you'll want to speak with Rolomia, and she will give you another clue scroll if you choose the first dialogue option there. Read this clue scroll, right click on it, and then press dig while stood next to Rolomia in order to get the casket. This casket will contain Closure's Robes Override, which you can access from the customization menu. So that's it for this quest guide. I hope it's been helpful for you all. It is the first quest guide I've done. So if you've got any suggestions or anything you feel could be done better or done in a way that makes this easier to follow, please do let me know down below. Let me know if you've got any other suggestions, any quest guides you want to see in the near future, and I'll see you all in the next one.